Hi guys, I'm the WPT Formula and today we're going to explaining Formula 1 front wings. Now the whole concept of a wing uh, on a racing car in general is to produce downforce. So you're essentially doing what an aeroplane wing does but flipping it upside down to pull the tyres into the ground and producing more grip. However, as you can see on the drawing in front of me, which is the Mercedes W06 front wing, which is this year's Formula 1 car by Mercedes, uh, there is a lot going on. So in this video I'm going to be explaining the sort of key aspects of the front wing and just breaking it down to a much more simpler level for you. Okay, so there are two sections of the front wing that you really need to know about. There's the outboard section and the inboard section. And they do, whilst very similar jobs, they are doing it in totally different ways. So first of all, I'm going to highlight the elements that, well, to be precise, the slot gaps in the outboard section of the front wing. So on the Mercedes front wing, you can actually clearly see the division between these sections because it's quite a sort of, you know, it's quite an aggressive concept they've gone for. So you can see these ridged profiles on the elements and where the ridges end is the division between the outboard and the inboard sections. So as we can see, once we've highlighted the slot gaps in the wing, there are one, two, three, four, five, six elements that make up the outboard section. And this is done to produce a certain type of airflow called a vortex. Um, whilst vortices are quite draggy, they are pretty much essential to how the front wing produces its downforce and also how it manages the airflow around the front tyre to make sure the rest of the car performs properly. So the slot gaps are designed to make sure the vortex, which is pretty big um, on the modern front wing, is, they're designed to make sure the vortex forms properly, to make sure it rolls up nicely and chucks a large volume of airflow around the front tyre. So. With the power of filmmaking, I'm just going to do this. And now you can see there's a very rubbish drawing of a front tyre. So basically, what the aerodynamicists want is for the vortex to form around the path I'm about to show you. So the airflow will come in nice and cleanly underneath here. Uh, this is the underside of the wing, by the way. It will roll up nicely and it will be chucked around the front tyre just like that, following the blue line. And the vortex will hopefully form and roll up around this line and the slot gaps introducing more flow into the underside of the wing will hopefully allow the wing to do that. The outboard section is the most responsible part of the front wing that produces the downforce itself, produces a lot of downforce. However, the inboard section is like just as important in terms of the overall management of airflow around the car. So I've highlighted the inboard section using this lovely green line and some arrows just to make that clear. It's everything to the left of it. So we have uh, one, two, three flaps and also the main plane of the front wing that make up the inboard section. Now the idea behind the inboard section is to also produce a bit of downforce but it's mainly responsible for producing another very important vortex called the Y250 vortex. Now I've covered this extensively in my blog and I'll link you some posts about it in the description but just for a rough general guide as to what it does it essentially makes the splitter which is the front the very front of the floor of the car which is a couple of feet behind the back of the front wing work better in that it seals it off from turbulent air, sort of stagnant air from impinging on it and thus makes it perform better by producing more downforce. So the flaps are pretty important for producing this vortex so Mercedes have gone for this sort of bent down arrangement so it sort of starts up here and then as you can see the profile sort of dips down and it forms these little tiny tips as you can see here and the underside of the wing has this big curved structure underneath it as well and just like the outboard section with its ridges it's essentially the same by using this sort of curved arch arrangement and that airflow is coming underneath the wing from this position here 
and just generally along this edge of the wing, coming under and rolling up using the low pressure that naturally forms beneath the wing thanks to the aerofoil profile and from the air being introduced in these slots here to form a very different vortex to the outboard section in that it's quite an elongated one and it doesn't disperse for quite a while so unlike the outboard one which sort of chucks a large volume of air around the front tyre before dispersing very quickly the Y250 vortex continues and sort of goes along the side of the car and round the side pod undercut edge before dispersing around the middle of the car roughly. I'll put a picture on the screen now as to what I'm on about. But that's important for managing airflow around the splitter and the side pod to make the car produce better downforce. So the final thing you want to know about the front wing are the cascade elements. So I've highlighted these in my drawing so you have this standalone element called an R vein because when you look at it from the side of the car it looks like a lowercase r and you also have the cascade winglet, the main winglet, which is again another turning vane, plus the two wing elements that you can see. And they're just designed to link nicely in with the main front wing in turning airflow around the front tyre and making sure that the wing is as efficient as possible in doing that job. You may also notice that I've highlighted this blue bulbous um, piece on the cascade and this is an infrared camera which points directly back at the front tyre face to monitor the tyre temperatures. So the team can assess this during free practice or even live during the race to see how their temperatures are and if you know they need any mechanical or aerodynamic adjustment to make sure that the tyres are in their optimum temperature zone and make the car perform at its best. So that's a quick sort of um, look at the front wing in very simple terms. Um, hopefully this has helped you out. Uh, if you liked it, like the video please. And if you want to see more, just hit subscribe and comment below as to what you might want to see in the future or tweet me or email me or whatever. And hopefully this will be useful to you again. So yeah, thank you very much for watching.